Welcome to the 25th episode of Window Shop with Car and Driver. This is the show where we give ourselves a challenge and then find cars for sale online. We present them and then we fight about them. <laughs> and uh, today the challenge we've given ourselves is the worst car of a particular brand. So, you know, the worst car a brand ever built, the car that really brought them down. And so hopefully we'll see some good stuff today, some good bad stuff. Um, Today, we're joined by our contributor, Brett Burke. Wave to the crowd, Brett. Hi, everyone. Who's making his uh, second appearance on Window Shop. And uh, the regulars, Joey Caparella, Casey Colwell, and Drew Dorian. And uh, Casey, you want to take it away? You want to uh, share your screen, see what you brought? Uh, sure. I uh, think this is the right one. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's, you know, picking the worst of something is, is, uh, <laughs> is never very easy, but, um, I, I had the same problem. It's kind of tough, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you kind of gotta, I mean, you kind of gotta create your own little argument for it, but, um, you know, I think I found, um, even when the worst, the worst Porsche still isn't, uh, isn't <laughs> that bad. Right. Um, that, that and this is, good. uh, this is 78, nine, two, four, uh, with like 38,000 miles on it. They want less than 10 grand. Um, the paint looks a, a little rough. I mean, this looks like a $10,000 car. Uh, maybe a little less than a $10,000 car, but... Um, it doesn't look like uh, it has any rust on it. No. It doesn't look like it has very much paint on the outside of it either, though. <laughs> yeah, it's missing probably a clear coat. Um, and uh, But um, this, think I think, is pretty definitively... Um, the worst Porsche ever. You don't think the, the 914 is good. worse? What? Well, uh, at least that's 914 is a good engine. Yeah, that's mid. Yeah, I mean, this is a Volkswagen. This is a Volkswagen engine. This is 95 horsepower. This was an um, Audi engine, wasn't it? Or an Audi, no, Audi, no. Audi engine? Uh, the it was sort of. I mean, it was a Volkswagen Audi engine, but it's it's Volkswagen. It was like EA 831, I think. Um, and. Uh, and then they used they used the Audi version in the turbo that came in '79. Um, but these, the U.S. Power? cars, sorry, I'm not scrolling through here. The U.S. How much cars. How did these have? These were 95 horsepower. Um, in, in Europe, they were 125. But uh, at the time, we had emissions, and you can see these ugly. These were U.S. spec uh, yeah, side reflectors. Uh, side reflectors that were just hideous. Um, but. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, this this car kind of set the stage for a number of cool cars that came after, um, you know, both the 944, 968, um, 928 came out after this even that, uh, you know, used kind of the same same layout of, you know, front engine, rear wheel drive, transaxle. Um, well, when they brought this back, better, it looks better than it is. Like, actually, the styling is pretty decent, but yeah, I like it. It's not a good car. And it looks like it's in good shape for being a Michigan car. Yeah. yeah no miles. I, I purchased a 1978 928 that's black on black with slightly more miles than this, but for around the same price. I mean, this was a few years ago, but maybe, maybe front engine Porsches have come up in value since then. I think this uh, guy's pretty hopeful. This person. This guy's, yeah, this guy's pretty hopeful. But, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, and they, I think they have come up in value. Um, but, uh, you know. It was uh, it was just about how much it cost with new actually. The nine twenty four oh, kind really? of redeemed itself when they brought out. I think in eighty seven or eighty six they put the nine forty four engine in it, called it the oh, nine twenty four. Right, you put a on it, right? Yeah, which was actually you know you know by all accounts a pretty good car. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, this thing went new. Uh, it was yeah, it was well, it's just under ten grand. I guess it was estimated. Um, what would that be with inflation? About 40, 45, 40,000? Somewhere in there? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I didn't, uh, I didn't do that calculation, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> what was the, what was the uh, test results? How fast was it? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not particularly quick. It's like 10 seconds to 60, 17 and a quarter. So that's like about as quick as, uh, what's that little Ford van? Transit Connect. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah but, really, I, mean, I mean, in the malaise in the malaise era anything sub 10 seconds was was decent yeah yeah but i think i think this car is you know if you read the story this is a pat bedard road test if you read it it's kind of 
the car that's its biggest downfall is the is the 280z mm. um you know it kind of performs better everywhere it's quicker Probably and it's price. cheaper and, yeah. yeah you get an inline six instead of this four yeah Oh, it only had a four-speed. It wasn't even a five-speed. Yeah, they were they were four-speed. They uh, in '79 when the turbo came out, five-speed became wow became available. You yeah. think so, this damaged I mean, the Porsche brand image? It like, was all synchro. You think it like made had a lasting effect on the Porsche brand image? I, I guess if they fixed it later on, maybe it helped. Well, I mean, this thing so they sold a ton of these cars. Oh, um, really? Yeah, I think this was this was when, shortly after this came out. It became their best-selling car. Uh, because it was you know because they the 914 was no more so they didn't have like an entry-level car and um you know even even for i mean especially back then for porsche that stuff was important looks like it was never smoked in which is nice <laughs> what about the kc ver this versus the slowest cayenne so some people would yeah. argue that the cayenne is sort of a, a a mark on porsche but even though it sold really well and obviously help to the company sustain itself. But a V6, a VR6 early Cayenne is probably pretty awful, right? Yeah, I mean, I remember that was, one of those was at like a, a 10 best, we had a manual, um, which kind of makes it, again, it's like, is the manual, is a manual Cayenne worse than this? And I don't know, but um, that Cayenne is kind of a dog with that engine, so. Yeah, the automatic. I think I wrote a test of the automatic with the with the uh, with the six of the yeah. first ten, and it was not. It was really really slow. Not. Very yeah, they're not. They're not quick. Those, and those were also like big and heavy, and those had you know those had two speed transfer cases. I don't know if the six did, but. Um, so you should just avoid all Porsches with VW engines. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe that's the maybe that's the theme of this. Yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, yeah, I guess the 356 has a version of a VW engine, but it's pretty different. Yeah, that's breathed on pretty heavy, right, too. Yeah. All right. I yeah, like it. So, yeah, so it's, it's uh, 924, worst of, worst of Porsche. All right. <laughs> Still pretty made good. a good case. Uh, Brett, what have you brought us today? All right. Let me see if I can make this work. Is that working? <laughs> wow. <laughs> a little too well. <laughs> this is uh, what is known as a Chrysler Executive. Um, oh this, is a, this is a limousine version of the Chrysler K car that um, came out first in 83. This is a last year of the run uh, model. They made it 83, 84, 85, 86, I think. And this is an 86. Um, why did they give up? I wonder. This looks like <laughs> exactly. Sales sales were strong. <laughs> they sold, I think, about about two thousand of these. No, seventeen hundred of these overall. So there were two different versions. There was, uh, the there was a like a um, I think they just call it the executive, and then there was the executive limousine. The executive was a had a twenty four inch stretch and was a five passenger. Uh, version um, and the limousine had a 31 inch stretch. Wow. Uh, had a glass divider. Wait, let me see if I can. Scroll is this the limo? Down. This is the limo, this right? The limo. Yeah, this is the limo. Um, wait, I can't get to the. Uh, what happened? Can you go to the next? Yeah, I'm going to try to. Hold on a second. Where is it? Oh, yeah, here they are. Come on. Oh. What if you use your arrow keys? What if I did, Joey? What if I did? Enlarge it, and then uh, there was a next button, wasn't there? Yeah. Enhance. Enhance. It's doing that thing it does with Tony sometimes. Oh, which is what? It doesn't it like, like... Oh, is it not display? Yeah, un unshare and then share again, and then it should work. Okay. Did you turn it off and turn it back on? Yeah, exactly. Is that working now? No. 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> so yeah, everything, refresh the page. Close Sorry. everything. Everything that's on your desktop. Minimum. There we go. Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. Okay. There's there we go. the next. There's the next photo. This is the front. So it had this new, uh, new for '86 uh, sort of stronger waterfall grill that I think was still <laughs> shared with another shared with another shitty Chrysler product. I'm sorry. Shared with another Chrysler product. <laughs> It had this, you can see sort of the delight of the interior. Oh, what's all that junk in there? It looks like some exterior trim. Yeah. So it had this animal, an animal might have been living in the back of this limousine. It had this, um, this special rear air conditioning unit that required a tunnel 
being built from the front air conditioning unit through the front two seats. Oh my and then God. There's two jump seats here, and there was a glass partition. I wish oh, had glass partition. In. Oh, wow. A glass partition in this image. <laughs> that glass, that glass is so dirty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, can you look back out, a please? Of, a lot of stuff went on in the back of this limousine, probably. If Uber, if Uber allowed cars this yeah. old, this would be a good COVID car because of the device. Yeah, would, yeah. yeah this is the glass thing. So, in the final year in '86, which I could maybe, you know, we could make a case that the that the earlier models were even worse than this one, uh, because they had the two point, they had the two point uh, two point six liter oh, uh, four cylinder. Um, in them, which made 101 horsepower. This thing weighed about 3,500 pounds, 3,250 pounds. Um, so zero to 60 for that was about 15 seconds. No, Not a lot of quick getaways. Year, yeah, in the final year, they put the Turbo 2.2 in it, um, and which made about 145 horsepower, 146 horsepower, and uh, that changed acceleration for the executive to 11.5. The limit. Yeah, I think this one has the hood vents. I think it yeah, has exactly. the mover like, in the, oh, yeah, of the turbo yeah. engine. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, right. Whoops, sorry. So, I mean, you know, the K car really did save Chrysler's uh, bacon in the in the late seventies and early eighties after they went bankrupt. And to the Aries K and the Plymouth Reliant, uh, the LeBaron, the LeBaron Town and Country all came out before this. And then after that, you had the six hundred, the Laser, and the Daytona, the Chrysler minivan, which came out in eighty four, the LeBaron GTS, which was in eighty five the Shadow and Sundance and all these other vehicles that came out. They sold 2 million, you know, Chrysler K cars. So uh, do you think what makes this the worst is that it was a reach into a segment where the K car never should have gone? I think, <laughs> yes, yes. And that was, you know, that's Chrysler's hubris in general. Um, <laughs> well, and were these even, re were these like factory cars? Were these like yeah, assembly line cars or is this like a coach build? The only other factory limousine that was being offered. The ASC made them for Chrysler, but they were factory limo like the Fleet, Fleetwood uh yeah what what yeah. segment was this what other limousines were there? exactly right it was like thirteen thousand dollar limousine I remember that my mom's hairstylist in um actually the woman who did the like hair washing you know what I mean at the at the hair salon she drove one of these why so, yeah that tracks. as a daily driver that tracks. <laughs> yeah as a daily driver back in the this was back in the 80s and early 90s um, my my grandmother had a, a New Yorker of this like same generation, and me and my brother loved it because it it would talk to you, and you open the door, it would say the door is a jar. A jar, yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> very high tech for the time. I would, I think I would make a land delay out of this. <laughs> I mean, it, it has the vinyl. It vinyl looks like it's out. trying to make a land delay out yeah. of itself. If you look at it closely, it's sort of it's like disintegrating. Like, yeah, there's no way that that roof does anything for structure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't think for rigidity to begin with. Yeah, I don't this, think this, those this, are this, original this, equipment wheel covers. I think those are off of like, like a Lincoln or a Ford. Oh, it's possible. <laughs> I think the paint also looks like it's maybe off of a Lincoln or a Ford. Um, the uh, the, it, the interesting thing about these is that the they, I think I was reading they required like two different cars. Like they used the front, the front half of a of a sedan and the back half of a coupe or something like that in order to build these. Um, oh, that's I can I can kind of see it. Yeah, like where, see, the, right? where the D yeah. pillars. So it's a, it's a Franken car. It's a, it's a definitely a vehicle that's in a category that I think I mean Chrysler made a New Yorker limousine in the late seventies, um, or a, you know an Upfitter did. Uh, and it was, you know, quite, quite a gigantic, you know, full-size rear drive thing. But this was just, um, I mean, it's, it's a, yeah, it's a Franken car. Uh, and I'm not exactly sure, you know, what they were going for. I think, you know, it was the 80s. Limousines were cool again. Uh, <laughs> they, they, saw, they saw some white space in the market. <laughs> and they decided to go for it. Um, Front-wheel drive limousine. Yeah. yeah. We need more, we need more factory power, limousines today. Power. There's not enough out there. It would make the stretch really easy because you don't have a drive shaft, you don't have anything to deal with, you're just stretching yeah. the body. I think yeah. super wealthy people realize they don't actually want a limousine, they just want a really big car with two seats so they don't have to take a bunch of other people around with them. <laughs> but definitely yeah, that, not a K car. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Nobody <laughs> wants that. This, this yeah. falls into a strange category of maybe like worst of Chrysler but maybe best of the K cars? I'm not sure. <laughs> Who's selling this thing? Who is selling it? Yeah, uh, like uh, where is it? What's somewhere in Dan, it's in Danvers, Illinois. I love Danvers, the 59, man. There's there no a, way it's going to be that cheap to ship. 
Is there any, <laughs> is there any information, like what's the information on? What's the, the information is, in case you didn't think it was new, it's actually used. This is a man or woman of very few words. Yeah, I mean, sometimes the, the you know, a picture is worth a thousand words and we've got four pictures. It's very true. Especially this one. Yeah, there's a lot to unpack in that photo. <laughs> and you will be, I mean, what is that? <laughs> true. Clock? Oh, it's a clock. It is, it's a clock. All right. Well, it's flavor, really is this flavor flaves oh, old limousine? <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's my that's my option. Right. Thank you, Brett. Thank you. <laughs> could you have, think, could quote, have been Brett, owned by Flavor Flav. Brett, do you think Chrysler's T C by Maserati is better? So you must think Chrysler's T C by Maserati is better than this limo. I do. I also I just feel like you can't pick the most obvious bad car. Okay. You know? Fair and enough. That's, that's better like, for Chrysler but Cimarron. Did anyone here pick the Cimarron? Okay. Yeah, I, I looked for one, but I had a hard time finding one. They don't exist anymore. Yeah. What was but the I, one that I, came I also the did Cimarron, find a PC though. by Maserati, and I was going to do that. Joey talked me out of it, so. Yeah. I All stand right, Mr. Mr. Caparella, you are up next, sir. Okay. Don't. Cimarron's the one I was thinking of. Never mind. What yeah. have you brought? Oh, boy. Okay, so I do feel like it's very, very certain that the X-Type is the worst Jaguar. But I actually think the wagon is kind of cool. Yeah. Right. So you've sort of redeemed it. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to save save the reputation of the X type by finding I I searched literally like all of Craigslist. I'm pretty sure this is the only one in the country. <laughs> wagon or X type? Wagon. There's was plenty of X type. Was this an all wheel drive vehicle? I think it was. Wasn't yeah. It? Yes, I think it was yeah. Jaguar's first all wheel drive vehicle. The wagon the wagon production number is super low. It's only like sixteen hundred. Yeah. It's like fewer Very than two thousand, right? Yeah. yeah, it's something ridiculously low. It's, that's it's, not quite as rare as my limousine, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> not that would. Yeah, it honestly looks pretty nice, but the X-Type is bad because it was basically a Ford Mondeo. So it was, you know, Jaguar when it was under Ford ownership. It was a lot of, you know, parts sharing and kind of down market compared to the, you know, reputation of the brand, I guess you could say. Yeah, Ford engines. The 2.5 liter uh, Duratec V6 and the 3 liter Duratec. Yeah, this has the 3 liter. Yeah. I think all the wagons have the 3 liter maybe. Oh no, but I'm not sure because I think you could get a wagon with a manual and that was with the 2.5. Wow. That's yeah. super rare. That's so rare. Yeah, I definitely am not going to find one of those these days. I don't that, think these that, have that, a very good reputation for reliability either. No. The Correct. manual, a that manual was... wagon removes the leaper off the hood and replaces it with a unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to do a real factoid there, but <laughs> no, that's, that's actually yeah. true. I have a real factoid, Joey. Go back to the front shot of the headlights. Ooh, ooh, what are the headlights from? They're not from anything, but the designer was inspired by the De Havilland Comet, the first commercial jet airliner, the one that uh, the Brits made. But yeah. the thing about that is the De Havilland Comet, like massive. Uh, decompression issues which crashed a bunch of them so they decided to give a tribute to this failed british thing with, with on this failed, failed british thing <laughs> <laughs> to continue the tradition the yeah. engines on these had decompression issues as well i think <laughs> there's a lot of parallels <laughs> yeah we'll um, get brad we'll get brad to show a picture of the of the engine intakes on the de havilland it looks just like that it looks really? just like the headlights shape I feel like it looks like the XJ of the time too. Like that was their, that was yeah, their. They were, they were trying to jag, jag it up, so to speak. I feel Most like it looks the, really down market from this angle. Like it, it doesn't look like a Jaguar at all to me. Like it's oh, no, it's it looks just, like a Mitsubishi Diamante wagon. <laughs> <laughs> and the chrome, like the chrome, a Jaguar wagon, a little bit. The chrome just feels like such an afterthought. It's kind of yeah. Sick. Everything's kind of just plastered on. Like it's it's not really a cohesive design. And it's a transverse engine too, since it came from the the Mondeo. I mean, the interior too. It's like they took an interior and then just slapped on that big wood panel. Yeah, and the J gate uh, shifter. Yeah, and the J gate. It's like oh, yeah, everyone loves it. So far. But yeah, yeah. I, I actually I think this one's not too bad. <laughs> I know. I was looking at the price. It's only thirty-seven fifty. Seems yeah, like it's not probably a bad top deal. down to like twenty twenty-eight hundred. What do you think? Yeah, the well, it says four thousand per. So it's already on its way down. All right. The Newark. Well, and you got to go to Newark to get it. 
You were at, at, at my yeah. location in Newark. He's demanding this person. I like, you know, most people when they like have the full history of a car, they'll say something like, yeah, I have all the documentation. This just says, I can tell you. <laughs> no, all. The of the car. But not it's over the phone. Apps. Not over the phone. <laughs> he's not just going to tell you, he's going to scream at you the, the full <laughs> I think you did fine. I think that's a good case for worst of Jaguar, although the wagon sort of redeems it. Yeah. It does, yeah. That's why I liked it. Yeah, a two a two five sedan would have been actual better, rock. Better worse, right? <laughs> All right. Uh Mr. Dorian. All right, I've got something. What, what strange, wonderful thing have you brought us <laughs> Um I actually regret not buying one of these i found one used at one point and it was in good shape so but i think everyone else will agree that it's a bad car <laughs> it's a c230 mercedes it was the sports coupe one but it was really a hatchback uh this one's in pretty good shape even though it's got a hundred thousand miles on it and uh this was the 2002 had a 2.3 liter supercharged Four cylinder and, and then really waxy cloth. Yeah, look at those seats. Wow, that's pretty loud. Continues under the door. Yeah, these look like they like you know, a C class drove into a um, or drove by a uh, paper cutter and just lopped the tail off. <laughs> yeah, it was like the BMW did that with the 318 as well, right? Yeah, yeah. try. Yeah, I tried to find a 318. They launched this after the 318, even though yeah, they knew they the 318 known? had failed. They were like, well, let's try it. And yeah, shouldn't they have known better? <laughs> no, they, they just have a thing where, like, if one of them has something in a segment, they have to make something in yeah. that segment. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't yeah. matter how dumb it, it is. It's like there's no business case for it. Yeah. It's, a complete, it's a complete failure. Everyone hates it. It's universally reviled. It's like, you guys made the um, X6, so we have to make the GLE Coupe. Well, whatever. and what's funny is that this, this yeah. body style, both for the BMW and the Mercedes, is really popular in Europe. But then the failure was when they brought it to the U.S. and it ended up just kind right. of being really cheap. Right. Yeah, well, there's no real market for premium small in the U.S. No. Right. And, or entry level luxury, you know, the same, yeah. the same same issue. And I think, you know, sort of the same issue that Chrysler was facing with the executive limousine, but in the opposite <laughs> direction. Bring it back to the limo. Yeah. It all comes back. Daimler Chrysler, right? Oh right! Yeah, yeah. Was that, that was it. That was before the Daimler Chrysler era, though. That limousine, I think, that was just. Well, this was the that this era. This was definitely this was that era. Yeah. The problem yeah, with this the... is that they, they also tried to market it as like sort of a sporty alternative to the C class, but it wasn't actually that sporty. And um, I found this review that uh, Frank Marcus had wrote for us oh, uh, back in two thousand and one, and you know he, he basically says like it's it's not that on to drive it's not well, any it wasn't mechanically it, it wasn't any different than a normal right <clears throat> yeah it's the same engine as the slk it's not super right. slow though no it yeah, wasn't super slow bad. he said but it wasn't also like a very lively handling car either no. it's rear wheel drive um but uh didn't really have the verve <clears throat> um it the has, price was good though it has the it has the little price. slit of glass so you can see behind you like the lamborghini espada or the yeah. honda crx where oh. the Honda Insight and the Prius. Yeah. Um, this also had, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this was like the first panoramic roof or one of the first ones where they did the, the panoramic roof. Oh, it could uh, be, yeah. Uh, I don't probably, know. Open, yeah. And this was like a big skylight that was fixed, but they had electric shades that you could, uh, you know, close them both. Right. At the time, I think that was, that was pretty rare. That's actually how the rear seat passengers got in and out of the car. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you had found one in that horrible, like puke green color that yeah. they did this car with. There's, there's oh, yeah. not too many of these that have survived because I don't think they were very popular to begin with. But that, that greeny yellow color was the worst. Right, because yeah. well, I feel like they were trying to make it seem more youthful. Like the same with the seat fabric. It's like, right. oh, this is the Mercedes for young people, but nobody really bought it. I've, seen, so them, I've seen them with leather. You can get them with leather, but. It's so stuck in the 90s, like that 90s fabric. And then even that yeah. color you were talking about, that green is such a 90s color, Joey. Yeah. yeah. This red is particularly hideous also. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't hate the red. I like the red. Continuing on the theme of hairdressers who owned cars that we're showing here, <laughs> I, did know, I did know 
a hairdresser in Charlotte, North Carolina, who had one of these and loved it and came to me when he had to get rid of it, asking for advice about what car he should get instead. Uh, he, he wanted something very similar to this. And I couldn't come up with anything. Strange. Mini Cooper? Mini Cooper, maybe. No, he ended up getting, what was it? Oh, you know, he ended up getting the new CR... X, what was that thing called? Oh, CRC. No. Oh, the CRC, yeah. yeah. Pretty much pretty much this, right? It's like exactly. How disappointed was he in that car? That's a good question. I I haven't I haven't I haven't talked to him in years, so I'm not sure. Was, right. it, yeah. was it a bad haircut? <laughs> he was not my hairstylist. <laughs> All right, thank you, uh wait, oh, wait, 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 wait. Scroll down. Does that say it's a six speed manual? I hate that yeah, about all these. It's it's they got so it wrong. Annoying. This one's an automatic. They get so yeah. many of them wrong. Could yeah. you get it with a, a manual? This kind? You could. You yeah, could. Probably. In fact, the one that uh, the one that I had considered buying was a manual, and it had the same seat fabric, but it was the darker red color. Um, somebody when I worked you, in a I worked in a dealership after college, and somebody had traded it in, and it was like really low mileage. Um, and I did. I drove it for a couple of days. I thought I was going to buy it, but then I talked myself out of it because I was worried about repair costs for a Mercedes and I was too, you know, too fresh out of college to be able to afford such a thing. So I didn't end up doing it, but. Do you ever think about the parallel universe that would have uh, existed? <laughs> yeah. what, what would have happened to me if where, I had done where, it? Where is C230 Drew now? Yeah, I probably, <laughs> made, I probably made the right decision. Yeah, <laughs> Who did you buy instead, Drew? Uh, I, had an, I had an Altima. I just kept driving it, my college car, so. All right, I'm up next. I had I kind of struggled with this task, uh, sort of like what Casey was saying. Um, but I think I I think I found the worst of Ford. Can you guys see that? Oof. Ooh. Yep. Yeah, the Aspire. Nice. That'll do it. Now the Aspire was a Kia that they rebadged. This replaced oh, the really? Festiva. This replaced the Festiva, which actually made people nostalgic for the Festiva. Yeah. <laughs> I love that script on the back. Oh yeah, it's like the and the Aspire name is so bad. It's like yeah, like good luck or like you know like maybe right. someday. It's I'm hoping for something better. Right. Fingers crossed for something better. Right, exactly. It's like the worst name ever. I love how it's being sold by a Lexus dealership. The least aspirational car. Yeah, yeah who yeah, traded exactly. this in for a Lexus? <laughs> yeah. They aspired to something better. So this yeah. came out. Also, the thing that made this really particularly bad, I, I think quality-wise, they were they were okay. I mean, they were probably you know fairly reliable. They weren't super unreliable. But this came out the same year as the Neon, and the Neon was like three hundred dollars yeah. more, and had double the horsepower. This car had sixty-one horsepower. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god, That's sixty-one. Atrocious. Yeah, it's horrible. I mean, it wasn't pushing all that much around. But I mean, the neon, the neon was like zero to six. The base neon was zero to 60 in like seven, nine. I think this was wow. like nearly. The neon was good. I mean, people like that car. Yeah. This is just terrible. Three Ooh, speed automatic. automatic. You made the mistake of getting the automatic. 60. Right, windows. Horsepower with the three speed automatic. That is. I like that it's automatic. parked in reverse. Is that, is that what I saw there? <laughs> I was reading the road test and they, they were saying, you know, they brought up the fact that the neon was, you know, a far superior machine to this for just a little bit more. And apparently the Ford people were like, well, yeah, we're hoping RV people will buy this because it's like 300 pounds lighter than the Neon. It's a dinghy. Oh, it's to, to, to dinghy tow, tow it? Right, just to drag, it's, it's easy to drag around. You know you're not you leave it in gear, it doesn't matter. When they're hoping for, oh, maybe some people with RVs will drag it behind. Yeah. This person, I mean, I think this one was pretty loved. This is fire, I mean, it's got the nitrogen. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, it only has 57,000 miles on it, so. Right. I mean, yeah, maybe, that, 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 how many miles of it were towed behind an RV? <laughs> <laughs> you want to check that rear suspension. I think that might be the original radio. It's very original, which is this. Yeah. 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 What state is it in? It's hard to tell if the color is like rose gold or um, pink. It almost looks two-tone, like it faded at different. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. at different well, it's yeah. got mud flaps. I like the chrome window surround in front and the black window surround in the rear. It really gives some <laughs> presence. There's, just something, the there's also just something off with the proportions here. Like, yeah, it, it's, like at its tallest point, it's too tall. It looks like, 
like a pregnant festiva is what it looks like. <laughs> yeah it's like the arrow it, it's like they applied the ford arrow stuff to a really <laughs> really crappy little car and i i feel bad dumping on a little car but or on a on an inexpensive car but this is a really bad inexpensive car and i think it's worse than mustang too because a lot of I just saw i cool. just saw the asking price and i'm blown away that they think oh they can God. get five grand for this five well, grand. it's very low miles I uh, still though. It is not an excuse. Lord. It have AC. <laughs> no, it has AC. It does? I, it has the button. It has AC. I, I think that. it has AC. It was optional. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's fully loaded with optional. I, I, I think I rather yeah. like oh, yeah, I see the AC small, button. lightweight cars like this, but it, occasionally there's just some duds. Like, generally, this is a a type of car we wouldn't have like hated, but this one was just particularly bad. Right, I, yeah, the 61 Euro Metro, don't get me wrong. Yeah, they, we've, we've <laughs> waxed about, waxed poetic about those on the show before. Yeah. yeah, and in the road test, I mean, you would hope that this would get great fuel economy, but in the road test, it only got 27 as tested. Oh my God. Wow, <laughs> my, my limousine got nearly 30, but that might have been on, uh, not in our hands. We would have, we would have gotten 15 out of that. <laughs> what, year, what year did these come out? Uh, 94. I think they made them from 94 to 97. And then what okay. replaced it? Or was it irreplaceable? Escort. Depression. Yeah, I mean, escort. I mean, used yeah, cars. I guess, I guess the Escort. But didn't the Escort coexist with this? Like, this was subcompact. Yeah, was yeah this is below Escort. Yeah. I think so they this... didn't have a subcompact for a while, and then they brought back the Fiesta. This car kind of reminds me, you know, it sort of filled the same space and was as uncompetitive as the Mitsubishi, um, Mirage with the three cylinder. Mm -hmm. Like, just the current, the car current. never really designed for America with not enough power and just really crappy. So, I would argue that that's the worst Ford ever put out, even though Ford really just slapped its badge on it. But, yeah, that's a fair assessment. It's a fair assessment. I just, I just looked up uh, 1994 um, uh, uh, like specs and stuff, and, and the next most powerful car. Um, was a Geo Metro, and that was seventy horse. Oh my God! <laughs> and then uh, you know, just to just to put nineteen ninety four in a in a nutshell, and then we got a Saturn SL one, eighty five horse. Nice Escort, eighty eight horse. It had three doors. Saturn SC one breaks into the one hundred horsepower territory. <laughs> <laughs> but the three cylinder Metro probably had fewer horsepower than this. I think that was like fifty. Five. A special gas super, super model. I mean, there? what's crazy is how little progress we've made because the Mirage that's being sold now, it's only like 74 horsepower. It's the same car, Joey. <laughs> 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 that's Mitsubishi's product strategy. <laughs> it's straight out of 1994. <laughs> well, and the other thing to think about is that car has, the current car has is probably a lot heavier and has more safety equipment and whatever. This so, had dual airbags. This had yeah. two airbags. The modern day Ford equivalent to that Aspire is the it, the Echo Sport. Exactly. I actually would that's maybe very make an argument yeah. that that's yeah, the yeah, worst yeah. Ford. Develop, right? developed for not Amer not developed for America, but sold yeah. in America. Right. It's very similar, and it is horrible. It would have right. been fun to do this with no price limit. You know, so we could have gotten like the big cars that are bad or something like that. Worst, what was our price, price limit? I didn't you said ten thousand dollars. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was <laughs> below. Right. <laughs> Unless we're well below. Yeah, well, yeah, the only person was. that came close was Casey with his Porsche. Yeah. yeah. yeah oh, exactly. right, right. Typical Porsche right against the price limit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Um, so now we've come to the part of the show where we judge each other's cars. So I think we should this week, since we have, we purposely have bad cars, we should judge on how well that car fulfills the brief. So is it actually the worst car of that brand? Thumbs up, thumbs down. And then if you'd really hated the example and you thought it was a terrible value, I guess you can give it a thumbs down too. All right, uh, Casey, you went first. Uh, what, oh, the 924. Yep. Uh, I feel like you could make the argument that the 914 was worse, but... I've never I disagree. Either, so. I think the 924, I give, I give Casey a thumbs up on this one. I think the, the 924 is definitely the worst. The worst. I, actually, I hate the 356 okay. personally, but I understand that that's an unpopular opinion. <laughs> right. I'll give it a thumbs up too. All right, thumbs Casey, apparently it is the worst of the brand according to this panel. Uh, Joey, <laughs> Joey, you went next with the, oh no, sorry, Brett, you went next with the limo. All right. 
I can't think Chrysler. of any worse Chryslers. It seems pretty bad. <laughs> that one gets a thumbs up. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thumbs up. For sure. Thanks, guys. I appreciate that. I thought about the 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 late the early '80s Imperial, but I actually kind of dig that car. <laughs> the, well, the Frank Sinatra. Sinatra. Yeah. Yeah. All right, uh, Joey, the Jaguar X-Type wagon. I'm going to give you a sideways because you could have picked the sedan. The wagon. Yeah, yeah, I know the sedan. The yeah. sedan's the worst one. Yeah, yeah. I'm fine. The wagons. It. Yeah. You redeemed. Joey it. actually bought that wagon. Yeah, yeah you redeemed it. Yeah. You know. He has been shopping for a winter beater, so maybe that's it. That would oh, be a good one, though. Yeah. Wait, what, what's wrong with the car you're driving now as a winter beater? It's too nice to get rusty. Oh, what well, not it an Avalon, though? It's a Lexus. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Rude. <laughs> All right, uh, Drew, you went next. My Mercedes. I'm going to give it a thumbs down because I, I secretly love it. I, not so secretly, I guess. I'm right. admitting I love that car. But I'm trying to think of like what's, what's a worse bad. Mercedes. Though. There's got to yeah, be that's a what bad. I was thinking too, Brett. Maybe like a, you know, like a 380 SL or something like that. People have all sorts of negative things to say about those. I think they're perfect. I feel fine. like there's probably cars that are worse than a Mercedes, but that car was like bad for Mercedes, yeah. like it hurt the brand. Yeah. And it was a bad time for Mercedes. Like that was during the real cost cutting moment, you know, where they were really like cheapening, cheapening out their vehicles. And this is an exemplary of that, I think. Yeah, it was it's, a weird, it's, it's an example of Mercedes just going for mass market and going for as many sales as possible. So, I mean, CLA, I think the CLA is similarly worse, but the new one's pretty nice. So they've kind of figured yeah. that out. I was going to pick a CLA. I did a story, I think, for, for, for Vanity Fair when the CLA came out that was called, titled, Is the Mercedes CLA an old person's idea of a young person's car, or is it just cheap? <laughs> <laughs> the answer is yes. All right. Well, I'll, I'll, I, I think I'll give it to you, because I can't think no, of, I can't think of a worse Benz. I'm the same way. I can't, I can't think of a worse one. Um, Maybe yeah. I'm sure the commenters will think of a worse Benz, but I can't. Yeah, or we'll have the, the wisdom of the staircase, you know, and we'll think of something and we'll all be texting each other when, when we finish this. But that's, I think it's a good choice. All right. And then I have the uh, Ford, Don't You Wish Your Life Was Better? It's fire. <laughs> yes. Terrible. I, I yeah, actually think awful. the Echo Sport a hideous is, example, too. I think the Echo Sport is worse because it's an SUV. And it yeah. fails so horribly at being. Yeah, but somehow Ford has convinced everyone to pronounce it Echo. To pronounce <laughs> Echo Sport, Echo Sport. And yeah, that just makes me more angry. It's, it's Eco Sport. I was going to try to find a first generation Explorer as my example of the worst of the brand, just because I think that was the beginning of the hideousness of all of the SUVs and things like that. And it was, you know, it was a problematic vehicle as well from a safety perspective. Yeah, but uh, that, was, that was the tires. You can't. Those weren't that bad. I know, this is but bad. This is uncompetitive. Agree. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm giving you some. I can't think of a worse I'll one. I'll give it. I can't think of it. Like I'm, I'm in the same boat as with. Like I can't come up with a worse one, even though there probably maybe, is. Maybe one. a Granada. A yeah. Ranger Splash. <laughs> I thought about a Lincoln Versailles. <laughs> a Ranger Splash I alone. A Lincoln Versailles is a pretty <laughs> bad one. That's pretty bad. All right. And well, that brings us to the end of the episode. Um, thanks for joining us, Brett. Oh, thanks for having me. And um, we'll see you guys next week. Adios. Guys, see ya.